With uses from electric cars to large-scale energy storage facilities, batteries are set to be an increasingly important part of our shift towards low-carbon energy and transport. But one key issue always crops up. Compared to fossil fuels, they don't store very much energy per kilogram, meaning they are relatively not very energy dense. Therefore, increasing their energy density has been a very hot topic lately. One of the most promising options for this comes from solid state batteries, though they have yet to overcome some key challenges. This video looks at how one of the major challenges may be resolved with the help of trees. Before looking at solid state batteries, it is worth mentioning a few recent breakthroughs using liquid electrolyte cells. These have increased the pack level energy density by improving the packaging efficiency. That is, to use more of the available space for cells instead of other bits such as cooling systems. Two key ones that come to mind are the BYD blade batteries and the Tesla 4680 cells. However, I don't think these should be seen as competing technologies as the solid state batteries improve the actual energy density of the cells. Therefore, both innovations could actually be combined in the future. And as well as increasing energy densities, solid state batteries are also less toxic and less flammable, which has many benefits, namely in the use of structural batteries. To help understand why and how wooden fibers can help the development of solid state batteries, I think it is first useful to briefly explain the problem they're trying to fix. Solid state batteries work on the principle of using a lithium metal anode. These anodes mean cells can have up to two times the energy density of traditional liquid electrolyte cells, which use a graphite anode. So why can't we use these lithium metal anodes with traditional liquid electrolytes? Well, due to uneven current distributions and chemicals within the liquid electrolytes, Sharp lithium spikes, called dendrites, grow from the electrodes and can eventually short-circuit the battery, causing fires. Thankfully, by using solid electrolytes, these dendrites can be slowed and suppressed, enabling the high-density lithium metal anodes to be used. In reality though, it's not quite that simple. Currently, two main types of solid electrolytes exist, inorganic ceramic and polymer. Both of these can also be combined into a composite electrolyte. Ceramic electrolytes are great because they transfer the lithium ions, which carry the electric charge within the battery, quickly and efficiently. However, because they're so stiff and rigid, it's hard to make a good connection between the electrolyte, anode and cathode. This is known as having a bad interface. When the components are put together, or when the cell changes shape during charging and discharging, these imperfections lead to gaps and cracks in the ceramic electrolyte, preventing the transfer of electrical charge and damaging the battery. Polymer electrolytes, on the other hand, are more flexible and can create good connections and interfaces with both the anode and the cathode. However, these electrolytes are not as good at transferring the charged lithium ions. This means that currently commercialized systems have to be kept above 60 degrees Celsius to operate effectively, as the electrolyte becomes better at conducting the warmer it gets. However, that could all change. A team of researchers from Brown University and the University of Maryland recently published a paper in the top journal Nature. This outlined how wooden fibers can be used to create a polymer electrolyte that works at room temperature. To create this new solid polymer electrolyte, the team of researchers started by taking a biomass source, such as wood from a tree. They then turned this into the more scientific sounding cellulose fiber. These fibers are then separated down into smaller nanofibrils and elementary fibrils, which contain the all important molecular chains. It is at this point the magic ingredient comes in. This magic ingredient is a copper ion carrying a double positive charge. This is added by soaking the cellulose molecular chains in a copper saturated alkaline solution. When the copper ions are added, it has an incredible effect on the fibers by opening up molecular channels. If we look at a normal cellulose fiber, the molecular channels can be thought of as closed. In this scenario, the fiber blocks the lithium ions stopping them from flowing and carrying charge. 
This is obviously not what we want, as we need them to flow during charging and discharging of the battery. So when the copper is added, the molecular channels are forced open, creating a road-like system for the lithium ions to flow through. In practice, this means the polymer electrolyte can work at normal operating temperatures, resist damage such as cracks, and create a good connection with both the anode and the cathode. If this can be proven and manufactured on a mass scale, this could truly be the holy grail of battery electrolytes. Although this is still in early research stages, it marks a significant breakthrough for the battery sector. Who knows, hopefully in years to come, we can be driving around in cars powered by batteries made from trees. If you like this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Thanks for watching.